Mr. Mills, yes. I call this emergency meeting because we are in a state of shock. church is in a state of shock. What, what is the church? Judge Waldrop just ruled that we are a business. Well, yes and no. He, Judge Waldrop did issue an opinion that the Church of Scientology is a business, but this was in denying an We had 22 lawyers, A-listers. Nobody saw this coming? Well, uh, well if you recall, your Mr. Miscavige demanded that something be done about it. We had to, because he's running the show legally. Mm. Okay, you remember, you've told me, me as your top lawyer, I take orders from David Miscavige. I do whatever he tells me to do. Correct. He wanted anti-slap and rid of mandamus. I personally wouldn't have recommended it, but he wanted it. He's the boss, we did it. So what happened, the judge issued an opinion which we're appealing. So it's not the end of things, it's a little bit of a problem. It was a 25-page, highly persuasive opinion. Well, I mean, it was a judge issuing an opinion in a court of law. Yes, it was persuasive, sure, but we're appealing it. What are some of the ramifications if we lose tax exemption and we are deemed to be a religion? Oh, if you, to be a business. if you lose tax exemption, it means that you, for instance, can't lock people up and do sex checks. It means, it's not very profitable for you, by the way. I mean, the sex checking stuff. It's sex checks are the absolute bottom. It is the cash flow of the church. So sex check Everyone is sex checked. So it's very lucrative. Hundreds mm. of intensives are sold to find people's crimes. So if finding people's crimes is profitable, we'll have to rethink sex checking within the framework of a business. If you lose tax exemption, it also means you can't lock people up in the Sea Org. You have to pay the minimum wage. You can't work the 80 hours a week without paying overtime, and they get to go home at night. Don't they have lots of remedies? For consumer law? Well, yeah, see, this is if the problem. You, if you lose your tax exemption, you might get some lawsuits and problems. But you know what? We'll work around these issues when and if it happens. We still have a long way to go in court. You know, I, I all right, so here's the thing. Yeah. We hired 22 lawyers. Yes. Some of them $1,000 an hour. Yes. And 22 lawyers didn't see this coming? Well, that's the problem in a lawsuit is we, a lawyer, we can't guarantee results any more than the Church of Scientology can guarantee results. So we can't guarantee what happens in the courtroom. This is why early on, you know, Mr. Miscavige rejected any idea of, of doing anything except fighting, fighting, fighting. Mm -hmm. which, which, so we fought. Which leads me to ask, why is the Church of Scientology always fighting? Why can't you guys, you know, like... Settle? No, I didn't use the S word. No, not settle. Get along with the world. Why, are, why is the Church of Scientology always at war with the world? Why don't you stop disconnection or fair game? I mean, why do you have to always go around picking fights? Mr. Mills, you mustn't get into the theology. Theology? The theology and the doctrines. Okay. Disconnection is part of the church spiritual work. Okay. Just but, but look at where fair game has led you in Texas. It's in kind of dangerous area legally. That's why I'm saying maybe reforming... Because First Amendment rights. Ooh, boy. Maybe, yes, it depends. We haven't even got to trial yet. And we haven't played the First Amendment card yet, but we will. Don't worry about that. I mean, look, you're getting sued like crazy in Narconon in the church. Okay, 
Yeah. Let me tell you something. What's that? We're getting sued because we're winning. Yeah. We're winning. The stats are straight up and vertical. The absolute detection you can make on whether we are significant or not is the number of lawsuits filed. So because we're being sued over and over, it's directly proportional to how we are just taking off like a rocket. So that, we are winning. You're winning. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're getting sued more and more because you're winning? Yes. Okay, but winning winning can be very dangerous under those circumstances because predictably you'll get sued more and more. So are you willing to tell your boss, Mr. Miscavige, that there's more lawsuits on the way? How much a day are we spending legally? Oh, I don't have the Globally. number. Globally. It's a lot of money. Tens of millions of dollars a month. If you keep funding it, we'll, I think you should keep winning. Look, I've got to... You see, we're the big boys in the big league. Yeah. In the tall grass. Big dogs, tall grass, yeah. And money is unlimited. Well, if money is unlimited, good. But you need to educate the lawyers that we are winning. Oh, I'll tell them. I'll go back we're and tell... We're on a winning streak. I'll tell my legal team that we are winning and to keep, keep on course. And by the way, speaking of lawyers, this Narconon lawsuit in East Oklahoma with 82 named defendants, mm -hmm. I'm going to need about 100 new lawyers. You'll be able to get the requisition for new funds approved through Mr. Miscavige? Well, Monique Yingling improves every single dime spent out okay. of IAS. Well, just let whoever know that we 100 need... more lawyers? Well, there's 82 defendants. And they all need to have separate lawyers, and then I need lawyers to kind of manage the lawyers. Mm. So probably like a hundred lawyers, give or take. But I'm glad you're winning, and as long as you're winning, we'll keep fighting for you legally, and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr.